Kansas City Chiefs are not a fun team to rebuild. They're so good that if you started a franchise, took your hands off the wheel, and just simmed 10 years, you'll still win about four or five Super Bowls. So to truly rebuild Kansas City, we'll be taking this team back to the Super Bowl, but without their star players. First to leave the roster is 99 overall Patrick Mahomes. Now, rather than releasing Mahomes, I'll be trading him away, but trading away the Chiefs stars for full value would probably be a little too overpowered. You could get a lot for Mahomes, Kelsey, and Chris Jones. So instead, I'm taking a second round pick for each of our stars. This will be the fleece of the century for whoever gets Patrick Mahomes, and I'm gonna let the wheel decide. So we'll be taking the second round pick from Browns, Bronco, oh my God. <laughs> As if the Broncos know anything about fleecing. They don't even have a second round pick. All right, I'm stealing the Broncos third round pick. Mahomes for a third rounder. In an alternate universe, this was a fleece for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yikes. Next up is Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Dude, can you imagine what Taylor Swift would be doing right now if Travis Kelsey didn't make her famous? She'd literally be flipping burgers. Travis Kelsey is getting traded for a second rounder. What team is he going to? The Jets? Yo, it's actually a powerhouse. The Jets are getting Kelsey. I am just landing on teams that don't have second round picks. All right, we'll take the Jets third rounder. Wow, the Jets are interested in Kelsey for a third round pick. What a shocker. Can you imagine being the Broncos GM? And Andy Reid approaches you. He's like, look, we'll give you Patrick Mahomes for your third round pick. And finally, Chris Jones. And I'm not gonna lie. I would enjoy an actual second rounder, please. Do the Steelers have the Seahawks? Oh my gosh. Wait, the Seahawks have the Broncos, right? Seahawks have a second rounder. We'll take that for Chris Jones. Oh my God. Oh, worst GM of all time. This is officially the Kansas City Chiefs lineup that we will be rebuilding. 79 overall. Hilariously, this still isn't the worst team in the league. We just made the worst GM moves of all time, and it's not the worst team. Let's talk about the good things that we do have to look forward to. If you played any Madden 24 franchises, you know that Rishi Rice turns into a demon. He just progresses so well. Part of that is because Mahomes is so good that he gives him a lot more looks than he'd otherwise get. So I don't think Blaine Gabbert's going to offer that for us. I'm going to solve the Blaine Gabbert problem. Trust me. Our tight end's Noah Gray. Offensively, I like our offensive line. We have four star offensive linemen. Left tackle's not great, but Thune, Humphrey, Trey Smith, and Jawan Taylor. It's actually a very solid offensive line. And then Isaiah Pacheco does not look at all like Isaiah Pacheco. Uh, Pacheco runs like he has beef with the ground. I actually love this guy. He's also a franchise god. He really is. He progresses so well in franchise. So he'll be great. Blaine Gabbert, literally so bad, it's not even funny. He's also 33 years old. He's actually maybe the worst quarterback in the game. 59 overall, he might be. So let's either sign a free agent or tank this year and go look at the draft. Defensively, there are good guys to look at too. Nick Bolton is crazy high overall and really, really good. He's already at 87 overall. He's only 23 years old. He'll be a cornerstone of this defense. He'll most likely hit superstar, hopefully superstar X Factor by the time we get a Super Bowl. Justin Reed is solid. He's 26 years old. He's got a lot of room to improve. One of my favorite young corners, Trent McDuffie. Only one year into the league. He's 82 overall. It's actually crazy when you look at this lineup and you realize just how good the Chiefs are, even without Mahomes, Kelsey, and Chris Jones. We're not going to win any Super Bowls right now, but hey, it could be a lot worse. And we can't forget about the Purdue Boilermaker, George Karlaftis. 78 overall. Great stats. Still progressing. I want to see him get X-Factor. I would love to see a X-Factor Karlaftis. Look who's a free agent, Matt Coral. I, I only like this because there's the slimmest chance that he could get a dev trade upgrade because he's only 24. Like, he's already five overall better than Blaine Gabbert, and he's also not 33 years old. The most likely scenario is Matt Coral sucks and we draft a quarterback, uh, but it is technically possible for Matt Coral to ball out. I don't want to rule that out. I've also moved Rishi Rice to wide receiver one as well as my slot wide receiver to ensure that he is getting as many reps as possible. All right, the Chiefs are ready to shock the world and go three and 14. Let's do it. This draft class is actually going to be super important for us, mainly because we're going to be taking a quarterback, I think. So we got to hope that Cassius Middleton, Jason Kramer, Walter Dodson, hopefully those three, at least one of them 
It's an absolute stud. Got Aaron Glizzy. I'm well aware it doesn't say Glizzy, but I'm hoping he's a stud. That'd be fun. This isn't a site you'll see every day. At midseason, the Chiefs are 0-7. And, and the Broncos, who we gave Mahomes to, are still 3 So even with Magic Mahomes, the Denver Broncos are 3-4. and four. Yikes. Now, bad news. Madden's scouting system won't let me hire or fire scouts unless it's the preseason. Whose idea was that? Why does Paul, why does Paul Richardson have to be my scout? I think it's just a stupid mechanic, but point being, I don't have an efficiency boost on quarterbacks, but my national focus is quarterbacks. So we'll have a better look at these guys. Just not a full look on them. Aaron Glizzy is shooting up the draft boards into top five. It would actually be awesome if I could take him because I kind of want him. As it stands, he does look really, really good. Skills are high in the A's, at least for the most part. Not everywhere. He's a 6'2 Clemson right-handed quarterback. We'll just have to see. Cassius Middleton is out of North Dakota State. He does not look as good on paper. And Walter Dodson's just kind of hanging around. Jason Kramer's fallen. It's week 11, we're 0 and 9, and there's a prospect spotlight. We may want to take a deeper look at cornerback Cole Tatum. I could set him as a focus guy, but I need a quarterback, right? I mean, I just feel like I can't do that. Also, thank you guys for the help. I didn't even know that this was an option, but I need to choose focus players. That's going to be Cassius Middleton, Aaron Glizzy, and maybe I will go Cole Tatum. Where is he? Interesting. So Cole Tatum is a 6'4 corner out of Virginia Tech. He's around 2'3 projection. But yeah, I'll set him for focus. Let's try it. Kansas City Chiefs end the season at the bottom of the AFC West, 3 and 14. Chargers went 11 and 6. Dude, how did we give the Broncos Mahomes and they went 8 and 9? That's actually sad. So our scouting did pay off, though, because it looks like both Cassius Middleton and look at this. Wait a minute. Aaron Glizzy is a round 2 3 talent, but he's projected in round 1. I think the guy we go for is Cassius Middleton, and I have to assume we have the first pick. So we do have the first pick, and it's got us taking Cassius Middleton first. Interestingly enough, in this mock draft one, Cassius Middleton falls to 11? Find that hard to believe that some... I'm still gonna take Cassius Middleton with the first pick. Honestly, if I hadn't seen that, I might have taken Aaron Glizzy, but it's good that we focus scouted him, because he's out of the running now. It's pretty much just Cassius Middleton. I guess I could take Jason Kramer under him, but... I'm kind of sold on Cassius. We're about to start the draft. I'm negative 30 million on salary cap. Dude, I don't know how salary works. It's actually bothered me with rebuilds that I don't understand it well enough. But I think even though I traded some of those big names guys, I think I still have to pay for them somehow. I really don't know how it works. But eventually, I don't think we'll be paying for them. Thank God you can pause the draft. Sorry, guys. I forgot I had a haircut appointment. <laughs> I got my haircut, went to the gym, took a shower, changed. And now let's clean up this Chiefs roster. Now, every mock draft had Cassius Middleton falling to me. I also don't have to take Cassius Middleton. I could take Jason Kramer or Aaron Glizzy, but Middleton is a top five projection. He's a round one talent, and it looks like the first pick was Nicholas Kane left tackle. The mocks had him going, and then the next pick, I believe, is the left end. I think the Patriots took him in every mock draft. So I'm really hoping that doesn't change right now. This will be a very unfortunate time for them to decide to switch things out. Please, Paul O'Neill, left end out of Temple. Dude, a Temple edge rusher goes second in the draft. I find that hard to believe. So my pick here is going to be Cassius Middleton. A lot of A's. We've got him 100% scouted. So we can see that he does have some Fs in here, but they're all useless. Spin move, stamina, injury, juke move, whatever. Deep accuracy is a C, medium and shorter A's, A under pressure. He's got great strength and throw power. His speed is decent. Cassius Middleton is not an athletic quarterback. I don't think. That's not what's important. He has to be hidden dev. Hidden dev is what's important. Hidden dev, hidden dev, hidden dev. Boom. That's really all we needed to know that he's at least star. And honestly, he's a really high pick. Could easily be superstar or even X-Factor. Field General out of North Dakota State with 78 speed, 93 throw power, 81 excel, 84 change. Okay, he's actually, he's decently athletic. I don't want to downplay him, but Cassius Middleton, we're hoping, we're hoping that Middleton is the future of this franchise. Let's get to the next user pick and see what we can take. With this second pick, it wouldn't be the worst idea to grab a wide receiver. I really like Rishi Rice, but what if we got somebody else cooking? Kenny Ferguson has flown up the draft board. Brian McAllister looks okay, but Judah Hale out of Michigan, six foot two, so he's a great size. He's got elite jumping and elite strength, good speed, great, like his physicals are very nice. They're not absurd, but they're very nice. His skills, 
He's got a spectacular catch. A to C short. I'm going to take a shot. Our second pick will be a wide receiver for our young quarterback. We're going with Judah Hale. Yes. It's all, it's all about the hidden devs, baby. It's all about the hidden devs. I hate taking a Michigan guy, but Judah Hale out of Michigan. Hidden dev, 6'2". And he's got 90 plus in all these important stats. Jumping, change direction, agility, excel speed. Once again, guys, speed, yeah, that's pretty slow for a wide receiver if I was playing. But sim stats don't matter. Like, I used to think 99 speed wide receivers were the biggest steal. But then you sim with them and they don't really do anything. So, Judah Hale could be an absolute monster. Round two, pick 20 is our next selection. What what do we need here? We did trade Travis Kelsey. This would be my third straight offensive draft pick. So I don't know how I feel about this, but dude, we use our tight end a lot. Cam Matthews. Oh my God. This guy's a specimen. Elite Excel, elite speed, elite strength, great jumping. And his skills are Cam Matthews. Okay. If he's normal dev, that's the only way that this is a bad tight end. If he's normal dev, Cam Matthews, six, Oh, he's 6'3"? Okay, honest to God, like, 89 speed, 90 excel. It's really hard to find a tight end who has that, but damn. He is, he is normal dev. Oh, okay. Hey, you know what? Two hidden devs already. We still have round three, uh, pick three here. And round three, pick 10. So we got a lot of options. I honestly do need a left tackle. Left tackle is very important for us right now. Physicals on Sean Garner, not looking too hot. It's honestly impressive that there'd be any good tackles this late. Uh, decent strength on Chris Murray here. He's got good stats though. Physicals on, oh, poor strength. I feel like a tackle with poor strength is just bad. What about Richard Cheeks? Richard Cheeks has marginal strength. Yikes, man. He has such good, like, skills, though. Like, he has high... It's gotta be high overall. A little bit further down, we find Marcel Mahedi. Majetti. Great strength. Skills look pretty good, too. Couple C's in pass blocking. I'm gonna go with him. I just gotta hope that he's hitting depth. Boom! He's so fucking ugly. That's actually insane. Why did they ever make that a face scan? That was the fifth tackle on the board. But really, the only important thing was that we found a hidden dev tackle. So we killed it right there. I am glad that I didn't just auto take those top guys. That's exactly what we needed. Hey, left tackle, tight end, wide receiver, and a quarterback. Should probably find myself some defense with this selection here. Round three, pick 10. There's a left end, Von Verden. He's a run stopper. I don't prefer run stoppers. I would kind of want like a power rusher. Elite strength, poor speed. So he's not gonna be very fast. How would he pair with George Karlaftis? Would Von Verden be good with George Karlaftis? Low finesse moves, low power moves. I just don't see how he gets to the quarterback. 6'3", 304, and he's a left end. What? Bro, you are a D tackle. Von Verden is a D tackle. Honest to God, I don't hate moving Von Verden to D tackle. I might move him to D tackle. This guy was built to be a D tackle. If Von Verden is hidden dev, Honestly, he's still a D tackle. How did this guy ever end up as a left end? He's 70 speed, 93 strength. He's 304 pounds. I'll still move him to D tackle. Hopefully he's a high overall, but Von Vernon is normal dev, unfortunately. All right, we got almost a back-to-back -back here. So let's see if we can get some studs. I really do like this corner, Devin Williams. His catching is an F, but he's six foot three. Ah, speed is poor. No, you're not the guy. I'm sorry, Devin Williams. You're actually not the guy. Look at this. What a bizarre corner. Keyshawn Oakman. Elite accept. Elite jumping, great agility, decent speed, decent change of direction, and marginal strength. Damn good skills. His zone coverage is an F, though. Main coverage is a B. This is a weird ass corner. I'm gonna take a shot on him. I'm gonna take a shot on Keyshawn Oakman. Damn. Keyshawn Oakman. 89 speed, 96 jumping, 94 excel, 6'2, normal dev. Darn it. Couple of whiffs here and there, but we got a lot of hidden devs too. Let's take our final user pick here. Then I'm gonna let uh I'm gonna let the CPU take over for the rest of this draft. I'm gonna go with the 6'3 free safety Raekwon Preston. This team will need a new free safety. Or wait, no, it's just a free safety or strong safety. All I know is we do need one more safety. Damn. I hate a lot of I hate a lot of normal devs, a lot more than I was hoping to. All right, I'm gonna let the CPU take over for the rest of this. Darn it. Well, to be honest with you, I think the most important thing was Cassius Middleton being hidden dev, because hopefully that's our quarterback for years to come. So Cassius Middleton, that one's gonna be good. We got a hidden dev wide receiver, and we got a hidden dev left tackle. So those are really, really good. The rest of this draft wasn't the strongest. The most important part, baby, the draft recap, Cassius Middleton. Let's go exactly what we needed yes Cassius Middleton is a 78 
overall. He's a, he's going to be a stud. By the way, you can check players' dev traits. I'm not going to do it anymore. I did it in some rebuilds previously. It ruins the fun. Let's just sim and see how these guys pan out. You know, let's have some fun with it. So I won't check. Judah Hale, the wide receiver. So he's a 72 overall. Not too high, but not too low either. Cam Matthews. Hey, so Cam Matthews, super fast. And he's a 74 overall already. So I will use him. Uh, Marcel Mahedi, Majedi. He's a 71. And then Von Verden. So Von Verden, we knew we were moving this guy to D-tackle anyway. He's a 74 overall. So he's a high overall. Uh, I don't think he's exactly Chris Jones, but maybe he could be. And look at that. He's a 77 at D-tackle. That's actually a fucking insane draft pick right there. He's just normal dev. If he was, if he was hidden dev, that's an insane pick. Keyshawn Oakland's a 70. He's definitely mid. Uh, Raekwon Preston's at least a 72. And then the computer took Lance Anderson. And then we got DeMar Johnson, Ball State University. Let's see what this entire draft class looks like. So we'll go full NFL and let us sort this by overall. There was an 86 overall halfback that went at the end of the first to the Bears. That's Evan Streeter with 97 speed. Jesus, that guy is scary. Harvey Smith, yo! This is a stacked halfback class. Harvey Smith with 92 speed goes to the Chargers. Floyd Smith wide receiver also to the Bears. So Bears got wide receiver halfback. Demarius McDougald goes to the Steelers. Nicholas Kane was the very first pick. Pick. And it doesn't look like, oh, okay. So Jason Kramer, I definitely had my eyes on Middleton, not Kramer. It looks like Kramer is one overall higher and presumably is also hidden dev. Oh. <laughs> so, okay. So technically we didn't get the highest overall quarterback, but this dude is normal dev. That is a huge bummer for the Rams. Took him with the ninth pick. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yep. So this is showing basically how everything panned out in that first round. Kind I just want to see if we whiffed on anything. Round two pick three is where I took the wide receiver Judah Hale. Let's see what other wide receivers came after. If we really whiffed on anything, there's not a lot of wide receivers after. Here's Brian McAllister, who is an overall higher and is is faster. So looks like Brian McAllister was a little bit stronger of a wide receiver, but not by not by enough to where I'm super pissed off about it. Uh, Jose Fitzpatrick is also a 74 overall, 93 speed, a little bit better. Next wide receiver is a 75. Damn. Honestly, I got the lower end of the wide receiver stick. Not by much. And he's still hidden dev. And that's really the important thing. So Raekwon Preston, not hidden dev, but Brian Cook. He's honestly better than Brian Cook already, I would say. Overall wise, he is too. So I'm going to throw him in to the starting lineup. Well, free agency is a myth when you have negative 50 million in cap space. I don't know how you can have negative 50 million. But here is the new look, Chiefs offense. So Noah Gray is moving to tight end two. Kim Matthews, not star dev, but Kim Matthews has a lot more potential. His ceiling is much higher. So I want him to ball out this season. Majetti, Machetti, ugliest face skin in the world is at left tackle. Rice is superstar, so that's very exciting. Tony is star, and then Judah Hale is right here at wide receiver three. We got Pacheco, Cassius Middleton, and you know what? We can let Noah Gray play some fullback. Why not? And then defensively, we got Von Verden in now. I'm moving Felix Anodike Uzama into my starting right end. We got Karlaftis at left end. Nick Bolton down the middle. Raekwon Preston at free safety. But sadly, yeah, I mean, I went offense heavy, but not a single hidden dev on defense. It's definitely a bummer. Linebackers are still very mid. Do not like my outside linebackers on this team at all. So we can target that in the next draft class or a free agency where I actually have money because uh, I'm broke right now. Then if you want to see specialists, we got rush D tackle Von Verden, left end Karlaftis, Uzama here. Got Nick Bolton as sub linebacker, McDuffie as slot corner. Judah Hale is slot wide receiver. You're probably a little confused about that. Why not Rishi Rice? Judah Hale will get a dev trade upgrade if he gets offensive rookie of the year. Rice is already really Really, really good he's not going anywhere and there's gonna be a lot of seasons where he can improve but dude if we can make judah hale get off to the craziest start by just winning him offensive rookie of the year i don't see why we wouldn't so hoping he pops out as a star dev and honestly he could pop out as a superstar or superstar x factor so it might even be worth it either way we have no free agency so it's time to get into year two 
Hopefully Cassius Middleton could have an amazing season. That's also true. Cassius Middleton could win Offensive Rookie of the Year too, but I feel like Cassius Middleton's gonna get good stats no matter what I do. Dude, season two? I'm actually impressed at how well we did. We didn't make the playoffs. The AFC West is very good, by the way. 11 and 6, 11 and 6, 9 and 8, 8 and 9, but it's way better than I expected us to do. This might be the first time I've ever, I've ever gotten to the top of the passing leaderboard, and it's with Cassius, and it's not close. It's not even remotely close. 600 more yards. We went eight and nine. This is like Kirk Cousins IRL. Jesus. Cassius Middleton threw 600 passes this season almost. 71% completion is actually good. 38 and 12. Dude, he's in his rookie year. He's got to be in the MVP running. 110.1 QBR. Almost 300 yards per game. Jesus. That's insane. In his first year, Isaiah Pacheco had 15 touchdowns on 1,100 yards. Very nice for him. Receiving. Okay. What? Who wants to explain this one to me, bro? Kadarius Toney is wide receiver two, and he's not slot wide receiver, and he still did all this? So Judah Hale had an amazing season, almost hit 1,000 yards as a rookie, had 13 touchdowns as a rookie, so he was getting in the end zone. Rice still did 1,009 touchdowns from wide receiver one, but somehow, like, how did Kadarius Toney have 100 receptions? Also an amazing season for Cam Matthews, 100 receptions, 1,180 yards, and six touchdowns. I'm just really shocked about everything else nick bolton with 130 tackles five tfls and a sack two and a half for carlaf this is all right von verden had two not bad two for cam jones i don't even know how cam jones is getting sacks at all but respect uh chamari connor free safety i'm so confused why was chamari connor getting so many reps i started raekwon preston i'm so i'm literally just so confused what happened this season how did we go eight and nine with those absurd stats oh wait 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 not only is cassius middleton superstar x factor holy shit but Judah Hale, Judah Hale is a superstar. Oh my God. Machete is a 76. He's a star. Cam Matthews does not look like he got a dev trade upgrade, unfortunately, even though a really good season. Judah Hale is a superstar. That's amazing. It's kind of what I was hoping for. I just don't know how Kadarius Tony got so many yards and then defensively. Yeah, what was Chamari Connor doing? How did he come in so much? Yeah, honestly, I mean, our offense is looking so good. It's really just defense now. Oh, Chamari Connor is sub linebacker. Of course. Well, he's the second sub linebacker. So wait a minute. Let me go into sub linebacker and make sure we get a guy in there that we want. I think I want it to be Raekwon Preston. That's an awesome, awesome season. I didn't expect that at all. We played so well. We're in 86 overall now. Middleton's X Factor, Judah Hale is superstar. I might have to move Judah Hale to where Tony... I don't know. I guess the touchdowns are probably more important though, right? Cassius Middleton in his first season in the NFL is fifth in MVP voting. He had to have won Offensive Rookie of the Year. It's There's no fucking... Oh my God. Harvey Smith. Oh, this is that running back, the 83 overall running back that went to the Chargers. Oh my God. Wait a minute. It's Chiefs, Chiefs, Chiefs. Middleton, Hale, Matthews, and Harvey Smith's going to snake it. No way. Von Verden came in seventh defensive rookie of the year, so that's not bad, but Carlos Walton's going to win it for the Titans. Wow. Oh, I'm so sad. Did we win anything? Jalen Watson almost got best DB. Dude, what a bummer. And now that the Super Bowl's over, we do get to see if there were dev trade upgrades, and we did get some. I think the most important one being Cam Matthews. Cam Matthews now in only his first season, so he started to have out of Notre Dame. 89 speed, 90 excel, and he's an 80 one overall so that guy is going to be travis kelsey 2.0 if not better judah hale i'm geeked about him i'm gonna move him to wide receiver two and then he's still slot wide receiver so it's rice judah hale Kadarius tony now and then defensively no dev trade upgrades really didn't have that good of a defense oh no i take that back Jalen Watson and, dude, I don't know anything about this guy. Chamari Connor actually gets a dev trade upgrade. I may have to consider putting him in over Raekwon Preston, which kind of makes me sad. Still a very solid season to go eight and nine when, um, when I felt like we were going to go three and 14. And most importantly, we're not negative anymore in salary cap. We finally aren't paying people that aren't on the team. So we actually could sign a monster free agent, 90 mil in cap. Nick Chubb is available. I would feel so bad for Pacheco. I want to keep Pacheco. I like him too. Just no reason to do this. 
Greg Newsom would actually be an insanely good pickup for us. He's 25, he's 88 overall. And yeah, Trent McDuffie's kind of by himself right now. Jalen Watson's okay. Joshua Williams is nothing special. Now, Greg Newsom is not too interested in the Chiefs. So if we're gonna want to secure him, we're gonna have to pay him a lot of money. I don't know if this is too aggressive of a high ball, but I'm gonna give him a five year, seven mil salary, nine mil bonus. He's expensive, but that's a strong offer. And hopefully Newsom wants to be a Kansas City Chief. As of right now, we are the strongest offer. Jeremiah Owusu Karamoa ends up being in a lot of rebuilds because he's always a free agent, but he's so good. He's such a good free agent. In this franchise, though, he's still star dev. He's usually superstar at this point. I'm going to make him an aggressive deal, too. Honestly, going to pay him about the same I'm paying Greg Newsom. We'll see if he takes it. So our two big free agent signings, Greg Newsom and Iwusu Karamoa. I'm going to do the eval on these offers. Both of them accepted. Let's go. These guys did not want to play for us, and they're and they're doing it. Low-key, if I can get Baron Browning too, I could revamp all my linebackers without the draft. So let's see if Baron Browning will take a deal as well. Going to make him a player-friendly five-year deal. Don't have to be as aggressive. He kind of wants to be in Kansas City anyway. We'll eval that. And Baron Browning is a Kansas City Chief. It definitely helped that we went 8-9 this season, bro. I thought we were going to go 3-14 in free agency. Wasn't going to be too much fun. Holy shit. Look at Cassius Middleton. Cassius Middleton right now is an 89 overall after one season. Look at those stats. That's insane. That was a very good pick. I wonder what Jason Kramer's up to, the Rams guy. Okay, so our new left outside linebacker, I'll make Baron Browning. And then our new right outside linebacker. I'm sorry, Leo Chanel. You're okay. Like, you're not bad, man. Karamoa's just... Obviously better. I mean, you have to know that. Now, CB1 is McDuffie. CB2 is Greg Newsom. CB3 is Jalen Watson. So, big upgrades in free agency. That was a huge free agency for the Kansas City Chiefs right there. That was exciting. So, here's the new look Kansas City Chiefs going into the 2024 NFL Draft. I think it's fair to say offense is done. Like, what could I do to this offense? I guess you could sign like a Jamar Chase or a Justin Jefferson, but I don't think we need one. Judah Hale, keep working, man. Cassius Middleton's absurd. 1,000% rate the right call there. It was kind of a no-brainer. Offensive line is nasty. Cam Matthews is going to continue to progress. And then new look defense. Kara Moa, Baron Browning, and Greg Newsom. My only concern defensively, we don't have any superstars. So we're going to progress a little bit slower than the offense will. So hopefully we're going to have a really good defensive year. But we are looking at a 91 offense and an 85 defense. This upcoming draft needs to be defensively focused. I think if there is a dominant generational edge rusher, I would take it. I would take definitely a different free safety. I think we kind of whiffed on Raekwon Preston. And I'd take another D tackle as well because Coburn's the backup right now. Now, it's going to come down to what's available and who looks the best, but let's get after it, boys. Our first pick. So even though we went 8-9, that's still round one pick 12. This was just a weird year in the NFL. It's just a weird year. I'll say that. Please keep in mind, my draft class settings are always set to strong on every position. So my opponents are drafting better players on average, but I am too. And hopefully that helps us today. There's a top five wide receiver, Xavier McGowan, available. I can't. My wide receiver are too good. Actually, this whole top four is wide receivers. There's a Maryland corner, Alex Gibson. His physicals are very, very good. Like, actually insane, other than speed. His skills are good, too. So he's kind of at the top of my list. I just don't know about that position so much. Here's Kyrie Hurd out of Texas Tech. Elite speed. A finesse moves. Oh, this guy was built to be a speed rusher. He's fast as hell with an A finesse move. I'm considering him. If I take a safety or a strong safety, I think I'm going to be reaching too aggressively. Alex Gibson, even though we just signed Newsom, I think I'm going to take him. I think this is my best available player. Alex Gibson. Thank you. Round one, pick 12. The 6'1 zone corner out of Maryland with 91 speed, 92 excel, 92 agility. He's hitting down. That's what I like to see. Now, hopefully, if I can just pick up a free safety round two pick 12, that will have gone perfectly. Let's see if it's available. Is there a free safety available? There's more corners available. Antonio Woodard. This dude looks like he'd be a free safety. 6'4". 6'4 corner. Great speed, great jumping. Elite change of direction. A to C hit power. You really could be a safety. You think Antonio Woodard is open to becoming a safety? I don't know. That seems aggressive. I do think D tackle is probably more important. And there's a Wisconsin D tackle, Adrian Laurie. I see goods and greats. Great strength. That's awesome. Great speed. That's awesome. Great agility. I really like the great strength for a D tackle. C block shed. A play rec. Power moves are a B. Pursuits a B. 
I think D-tackle is more important. I'm not going to take a corner and move into safety. I'm going to take the D-tackle, Adrian Lowry. Two for two, baby. 81 Excel, 91 strength, 76 speed. He might start over Von. It just depends. Depends on his overall. If he's a really low overall, I think I might still start the boy Von. If he's, a, if he's like a 74 plus... He might be an instant starter on this lineup in my new rush D tackle. So good. We're shoring up our mistakes from the last draft. I like that. Round three, pick 12. Best case scenario is a free safety. Are there free safeties available? No. Well, so there's two corners, DeAndre Higgins and Trio Weber. And then there is a strong safety out of Michigan State, Tyrell Mixon. With A hit power, A tackle. Ooh, I kind of like this guy. I kind of like this guy. Okay, good speed, solid jumping, decent agility, great excel, elite strength. This is a fucking, this is like a Cam Chancellor. A block shedding, A pursuit, A hit power, A tackle. I don't care if you're normal dev. I'm taking Tyrell Mixon. Let's go! He's a Michigan State guy, of course. He's going to be a stud. Tyrell Mixon with 90 speed, 92 excel. I don't even get to see his hit powers or anything yet, but he's hidden dev. Look at this fucking guy. This guy was literally built to blow shit up. Like he's got C to F zone coverage. Guy doesn't know a fucking thing about a zone. Coach says cover four. He said, shut up, coach. I'm going to hit somebody. A block shed, A pursuit, A hit power, A tag. I like this guy, man. I like this guy. Tyrell Mixon. So I'll move him to free safety. He'll kind of take over Raekwon Preston's role. And for my pick here, I mean, honestly, we have a lot of depth at a lot of positions right now. I honestly don't hate taking a wide receiver here. Keegan Thompson out of Michigan is 6'5", with a 40-inch vert, a 10'8 broad jump. He's 6'5". I kind of want to do this just in case we end up trading Kadarius Toney. Oh my God, I'm fucking lights out. That first year draft kind of made me sad. So we're getting full redemption right now. We get Keegan Thompson. Yeah, I mean, Kadarius Tony. I kind of want to trade him. Like low key, I want to trade him. So he can replace that. And now we have a big, big body wide receiver. God damn, 94 jumping 6'5". I do wonder though, like does height matter in a sim? Like, does it matter that Keegan Thompson is 6'5"? Would he get the same stats if he was 5'11"? I hope that's not the case. That'd be no fun. But um, I can go, I'm gonna advance to the end of the draft here. I feel really good about everything that just happened. We'll see if the CPU took some good players. Really, the only important thing here is the overalls now because that was an amazing draft as far as hidden devs go. I went four for four. And hey, just so everybody can see, just so everybody can see, franchise settings, draft class strength. I go strong for every single position, but not very strong. I go strong. I think it's significantly more fun and it's not an unfair advantage because every team in the league has the same draft class. So I don't know. I like it. Draft recap, baby! Got so many monsters and oh my god the cpu holy shit this might be one of my best drafts literally ever quinn darius i get it guys i'm super white but come on quinn darius what racist ass dev at ea made that name nobody in real life is named quinn darius quinn darius is a made-up name that white people say when they're making fun of black people quinn darius Ah, shit, it's a real name. Oh my god, wait. Bama has a wide receiver right now named Quindarius Watkins. No, he's a tight end. Oh no, he played in 2019. Okay, I'm, I am actually racist. Shit, it's a real name. Fuck. To all the Quindariuses watching, I'm so sorry. The CPU drafted me a 77 halfback in the fifth round. I was kind of hoping he'd be a speed demon, but he's 92 speed, 89 XL. All right, let's go over this draft. So Alex Gibson out of Maryland. There's a good chance we just drafted a superstar or a superstar X factor. Because when they're 78 overall, those boys can be demons. Adrian Lowry is fast, man. A 76 overall or a 76 speed D tackle. He's 73 overall. A little lower than I was hoping, but he'll still, he'll still probably be a starter here. Tyrell Mixon's a 74. Keegan Thompson's a 74. And they even got Javante Lewis corner, who's a 71. Is he hidden dev? Wait a second. What about Quindarius? Quindarius is a 77. He's got to be hidden dev. Oh, no. Quindarius Riddick is not hidden dev. But that's a very nice backup for Isaiah Pacheco if he ever gets tired. First thing we got to do, Tyrell Mixon. I got to move him to free safety because strong safety's locked up. Justin Reed's got that. He's a chief through and through. I'm not going to mess with him there. Tyrell Mixon. I'm hoping you're a higher overall. No, he's the, he's the exact same overall. Okay, that works. That works great. Let's recap this entire draft though. We still could have whiffed. Even, even with a good pick, you can whiff. 
So let's see how it went. Kyle Chamberlain, the first pick, 74 overall. Saints are not happy about that. Conley, 78. Walker, 79. Chris Savage. Cliff Duval, wide receiver out of Michigan, is an 80 overall. 75. So it's interesting. I had strong on both last draft class and this one, but this one feels a lot weaker. Maybe not. Sam Whitting is an 82 left guard. Ooh, big whiff. Big whiff. I mean, this is the guy we were talking. He's the 99 speed wide receiver. 69 overall to the Panthers. I think that's a whiff. Uh, let's sort by overall. Who's the highest overall player? Yeah, this is a lot weaker than the last draft class. Sam Whitting was an 82. Duvall's an 80. That's all 79s. And we were able to get a 78 at round one pick 12. So I think we made an excellent, excellent pick. That's one of the best drafts I've ever done. I don't know if I really got a generational talent, though. A 78 overall corner is not too insane. I'm moving Adrian Lawry to rush D tackle. I want the sacks to go to him just in case. I mean, he could be superstar. He's probably star, but... D tackle is a tough position. It's a really tough position to develop. So I need the star guy in there. I'm also, I'm going to move Alex Gibson to slot corner. I want him to have those stats. And honestly, uh, you usually want your best players in these positions, but we're not going to win anything this year. I'd like to win something this year, but I just don't think we're Super Bowl ready. We might as well get the important guys, the reps they need. But we're not going to tank either. Like, I think we're going to be good. All right, let's take a look at this lineup. All right, going into the season, we've, of course, got Cassius Middleton, <laughs> Stud, Rice, Keegan Thompson, Judah Hale, and I need to find a trade for Gadarius Tony. I've kind of got to unload him. We got Mixon, Uzama, Von Verden, Lawry. Got Gibson now, who looks like he's going to be a monster. It's going to be a good season, boys. Before the season starts, though, I do want to find a trade for Kadarius Tony. I like Kadarius Tony, but I just think he has too much value to keep him right now. So Kadarius Tony's an 84 overall, and he's 26. This should have some value to some teams. Patriots got cap space. They desperately need a wide receiver. What can we try and take off of them? Oh, there's no way I'm getting Christian Gonzalez. Dude, Will Anderson is a 91 overall superstar X Factor. Uh, but the Texans really need a wide receiver. And they drafted Dante Conley, 78 overall, hidden dev. Wait a minute. You think they would part ways with Will Anderson? Kadarius Tony in a second round pick. All right, I'm not even close. Oh, this is aggressive. Kadarius Tony, my first and my second. <laughs> It's possible. Let's offer him my right end. Who's my right end? U Uzama, right? We replace Will Anderson. We give him Kadarius Tony. A first and a second. Will Anderson. Oh, that was like a slightly realistic trade. At least more realistic than most franchise trades. Most franchise trades are like your bummiest wide receiver and five fifth round picks for Jamar Chase. Would I have done this if I was the Texans? Probably. Actually, dude, I don't know. Did I get fleeced or did I fleece? It's really hard to say, but we are sending Kadarius Tony, Felix Anudike Uzama, and my first and second round pick for the 91 overall superstar X Factor, 23 year old Will Anderson Jr. Damn, I can't believe they bit on that. I thought that was not even going to be possible. I will say about Madden trades, they feel more realistic than years past, but sometimes, sometimes you can just get away with the most unrealistic nonsense. I don't know if that's a perfect example of it, but Will Anderson Jr. looks real good in his new threads. That much, I can certainly tell you. He's two years in the league. He's going to be a 99 overall on this team. 88 speed. Jesus. Jesus. This card is ridiculous. Once again, I don't know if abilities matter in the sim, but uh, we're going to rock him anyway. Got to make sure we move him in the depth chart so he is always on the field. Rush right end is Will Anderson. Hey, and I said I need an X Factor on defense. We got an X Factor on defense. We got rid of players that weren't helping our squad, and I think we couldn't be more ready for this season. We're an 88 overall, despite trading Mahomes, Chris Jones, and Travis Kelsey. The Chiefs are just busted. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Hey. Hey, and just like that, it's going to be our first playoff game. I can't believe how quickly this team got so good. And as I go look at my lineup here, keep in mind that it's not until the Super Bowl that we'll know if we got dev trade upgrades. So roster right now, Cam Matthews looks like he had a solid, but not too spectacular season. Rishi Rice is up to a 90. Judah Hale's up to an 86. So he had a very good season. I am just like the drafting god on wide receivers. Keegan Thompson either somehow dev'd up in the sim or he was a superstar out the gates. I think that means he was a superstar out the gates. Keegan Thompson. 
That Kadarius Tony trade will go down as one of the best trades we ever made, bro. So not only do we now have three superstar wide receivers, a ton of weapons for our X Factor, Cassius Middleton, who, by the way, looks like he had a very solid season. He's a 94 overall, technically a 93. We'll give him a field general upgrade here. Morale is kind of cheesing his upgrades here, but uh, God, this guy's a fucking monster. Can we talk about that? You trade Patrick Mahomes and you instantly draft Cassius Middleton. Pacheco is up to a 93 overall and uh Quindarius Riddick looks like he had a looks like he had a good season then defensively of course we've got Will Anderson and there's no way there is no way there's no way Alex Gibson is a superstar round one pick 12 corner Alex Gibson superstar x factor dude I only have the settings on strong they <laughs> This truly might have been the best drafting I've ever done, and it's almost just pure luck. Like, I did not I did not have the scouting report on Alex Gibson. That just worked out well. Looks like um, Gibson's a 90 overall at safety. Damn. Um, Tyrell Mixon is star dev. Looks like Newsom and McDuffie. Dude, so it was perfect. The, the fact that we put Gibson at slot corner was definitely the move, and Will Anderson's already up to a 96 overall. Lowry was a star dev. Looks like he's progressing fast, though. He's already kind of given Verdon a run for his money, at least overall-wise. So Adrian Laurie, I'm very happy with how he's progressing. 96 strength right now. That's great for a D tackle. Wow. And hey, we got a playoff game here against the Buffalo Bills. I don't really expect to win this game, but I do need to see the stats. Cassius Middleton leads the league again. Holy shit. Dude, this guy was born for the Chiefs playbook. He was literally born to be on this team. This is nuts. 4,800 yards, 38 for 8, 69% completion, 112 right. He's not going to win MVP. I wonder who does. Who wins MVP here? Burrow, 39 and 2, probably. Who played like absolute shit? That's what I want to know. Who's just the worst QB? Zach Wilson did not have a good season. Neither did Justin Fields. So Pacheco, another amazing season. Upped his yards, upped his touchdowns. He's still star dev as of now. Cam Matthews leads our team in receiving yards this time around. Judah Hale gets 13 touchdowns, 1,000 yards. Thompson gets three touchdowns and 1,000 yards. Rice, 978 and six touchdowns. So somehow Rice is getting phased out. But honest to God, it doesn't matter. All three of these wide receivers are excellent. I don't really care who gets the ball which is kind of crazy but defensively nick bolton 144 tackles and three sacks seven and a half for will anderson seven and a half adrian laurie is he gonna be in the defensive rookie of the year conversation with a season like that carl mo had three and a half bolton had three carlaftis had three damn we were everywhere what about interceptions five interceptions mcduffie two for justin reed one for alex gibson jeez Who's defensive rookie of the year then? I feel like seven and a half sacks as a D tackle. I feel like Adrian Lawry could be in the conversation. Looks like Herbo is going to go for MVP here. Coach of the year is Arthur Smith. Offensive player of the year, Jonathan Taylor. Defensive player of the year, Mad Max Crosby. Offensive rookie of the year, Marquis Ferris. Keegan Thompson gets third. Defensive. That's nuts. That is nuts. To draft Adrian Lawry and have him do this well in his first year is so exciting. Looks like he will win Defensive Rookie of the Year, at least for the AFC and the NFC. It's Eric Matthews. Sure. It's another D tackle, actually. But we're not simming anything. We've got a game here. I'm actually really excited to see how we play in our first playoff game. Gibson's got an upgrade. We'll take those. Let's see how we fare against the Bills. They've got Tredavious White, Josh Allen, Diggs. Josh Allen is a 99 overall, and they have home field advantage because they're 13 and 4 on the regular season. Let's see if this is a game or not. I'm really excited. Start out 0 0. First on the board is the Bills with a touchdown. We return with a field goal. They return with a field goal and another touchdown. Yikes. This might be getting out of hand here. 20 to 3. Hey, wait a minute. 20 to 10. Wait a minute. 13 to 20. Ooh. And they just chewed the clock out there. I was trying to switch to go watch it, but Kansas City Chiefs fall in their first playoff game. We kind of expected that. The Bills were the favorites. We're not quite there, but we're real close. Cassius Middleton had a horrible game. Wow. Middleton's been so good. And he came up real flat here. 21 for 38. I guess that's how he's throwing for so many yards because he's throwing this many passes. Uh, on the ground, Pacheco was 12 for 56 in a touchdown. He did have a good game. And through the air, yeah, we just didn't get anything going today. 13 to 20 Chiefs fall to the Bills. And uh, that's a wrap on this season, but still going to the playoffs, getting our feet wet. I'm cool with that. Let's get some season recaps in here. So defensive rookie of the year actually goes to Eric Matthews, but we still won it for the AFC, which I think gives Laria a dev trade upgrade. I don't actually remember. Falcons. 
beat the Ravens in 2025 and 24. The Falcons beat the Broncos. Holy shit. Falcons dynasty is inbound right now. And in 23, the Cowboys beat the Jaguars. I'm so sorry, guys. I forgot to mention this. I didn't look at stats in season one because I'm a casual. But if you made it this far, you get to learn that Rishi Rice was the offensive rookie of the year, which is awesome. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, that I, that I missed that earlier. We're on 92 overall. That's a gross overall. That's just so high. If we look at our lineup now, though, we will see depth trade upgrades if there are any. Isaiah Pacheco and Cam Matthews. Offense has two depth trade upgrades. Pacheco finally gets himself some abilities, and Cam Matthews is up to superstar. Tight ends are so good in the Chiefs playbook, so I'm not too shocked by this. And I'm glad we drafted Cam Matthews and stuck to him. He was normal dev when we drafted him. But what Noah Gray can never learn how to do is have this much speed and acceleration. So I think we made the right call. I'm sorry, Noah Gray, but I think this is the right call. And defensively, Jesus. Jesus. Like, half my defense got it. Nick Bolton gets an upgrade. Adrian Lawry does get it for winning defensive rookie here on this side. McDuffie gets it and Tyrell Mixon gets it. Bam! Yep, and Laurie gets two skill points, so he, he definitely won. In fact, I think it shows you, if I go to progression history, yeah, look at that. He gets the player award defensive rookie of the year, and that's actually interesting. It kind of looks like it gave it to him twice. Doesn't it look like that? Did he accidentally get that twice? That can't be right. Listen, I don't ask questions like that, boys. Laurie's getting two run stopper upgrades, block shed and tackle and awareness block shed play wreck and of course he gets an ability now defensive rally and uh secure tackler why not this team low he could win it next year what's even crazier is we still have cap space like i could sign a monster here in free agency sauce gardner's a free agent he's a 99 overall he has no interest in playing for kansas city 20 mil a year what if i had gibson mcduffie sauce and then we traded greg newsom i guess Darius Slay is available. He's 35, though. None of these guys want to play for us. I might as well fire on Sauce Gardner, dude. 99 overall corner. I'm going to give him that very... <laughs> I'm going to give him the very player-friendly deal and uh, $17.5 million. With it's still yellow offer strength. I just offered this guy $165 million, and he's thinking about it. Holy shit. All right, we're going to make Sauce Gardner the highest-paid corner that's ever existed, potentially. I have the cap for it. My whole team is rookies. I'm going to make him an even more aggressive deal. This one borders into green. Looks like he still wants to play for Tennessee. I'm going to let him go. I'm going to eval this. He went to Tennessee. No, he went to Tampa Bay. Sauce, if you don't want $200 million and to win a Super Bowl, it's on you. Dude, this free agency is pitiful. There's nobody I want. Honestly, it's pitiful. That's crazy. We don't need free agents, boys. We don't need free agents. I'm literally like, there's nobody I can go for. If we couldn't get Sauce or Batonio, who both signed to different teams, then it's a wash on free agency. I really have no interest in this upcoming draft just because of how good our team is. If I unloaded all my picks in this draft, I'll keep my I'll keep my six round. And and Baron Browning. I wonder if I could get a stud right outside linebacker. That Evan Streeter, that halfback, by the way, is now a 97 overall for the Bears. And the wide receiver they drafted, Floyd Smith, is an 89. Damn. TJ Edwards is an 86 overall. Superstar X Factor. Dude, the Buccaneers took Sauce Gardner from me, and I'm going to see if I can get Lynn Hodges off of them. This dude is 25 Superstar X Factor, 82 overall. I'm going to offer Baron Browning and my third round pick. Am I offering too much? Loki, I might be able to I'm able to hang on to it. Just offer a six round and Baron Browning. Oh my God, they don't give a shit about Lynn. This guy's a superstar X Factor. You should probably care about him. They're going to trade him for a sixth, seventh and Baron Browning. Oh no. Maybe just a fifth rounder then. Close. Let's bring the seventh back. Retain the sixth. Wait a minute. They're going to need the sixth. Baron Browning. A fifth and a sixth. Gets us Lynn Hodges, who is superstar X Factor. Jesus. That's a crazy trade. This team is so set. This team is set for a bazillion years. Lynn Hodges. The speed. Oh, he's a speed rusher, though. Hmm, I should have looked at that first. 83 speed, 94 excel, 91 finesse moves. This guy wants the blitz. I rushed into that trade, actually. No wonder. I did rush into that trade because in this set, Lynn Hodges is more of a true linebacker. I'll be honest. The fact that this dude's an 83 overall, and he's that fast, and he's super size factor, I think he's going to be good anyway. But scheme-wise, that was not the right call. Lynn Hodges does not want to be in pass coverage. And Lynn Hodges is about to be in pass coverage. Sorry, Lynn Hodges. <laughs> Welcome to Kansas City. Yikes. That was, uh, that was an oversight.
So our first pick's not till round three. Round three, pick 22. There's almost nothing we could take here that's super valuable to us. My offensive line's getting older, I guess. I'm taking Clifton Barkley out of Michigan. I'm gonna find a nice backup tight end. He actually looks like a monster. That's the reason I want this dude. He looks like a monster. Clifton Barkley. That's who I'm taking. Do we need two tight ends? No, we, we don't need two tight ends, but we don't need anything. Guys, that's what we need is nothing. 84 speed, 84 excel, 77 strength. Hidden dev on Clifton Barkley. A medium route, A catching, A run block. A run block finesse. I'm letting, I'm letting the CPU take over on this one, boys. We traded almost every pick in this draft class. The moment of truth, Clifton Barkley. Were you a... No, nah, he wasn't generational. He's 74 overall, though. I'm chilling on Clifton Barkley. Then we got Dylan Crocker. Yikes, he looks like a bum. He's hitting dev. Dylan Crocker's hitting dev. Not bad. Then Tyree Norwood out of Syracuse. Holy shit. You have no business being hidden dev, bro. You're a 68 overall Syracuse seventh rounder. I got some hidden dev linebackers. Hey, so if our new, if Lynn Hodges doesn't pan out, let's see what the whole draft class looked like. Was this a good draft to trade away all your picks, Matt? Oh no. Ah, here's the thing. This guy is a monster. That's a generational corner. Greg Cruz to the Browns, 86 overall, 97 speed. That guy's insane. Round one pick four though. So I would have had to trade up to even have a shot at this guy. He's got to be superstar X Factor. I will check. He's not on my team. So I will check. Greg Cruz, he had to be. He had to be superstar X Factor. Guy's a freak. Jesus. And then there was an 83 overall wide receiver, Gil Steffens. A lot of Michigan players. I don't like that. Gil Steffens. Are you... I'm going to say superstar. 83 wide receiver doesn't seem that good. Jesus. See, bo both of those dudes were superstar X Factor. I guess it makes sense. So the two highest overalls in the, in the class. Rest of this class looks solid. Nothing too fancy. We weren't all too involved in that draft class, but um, you know, we still ended up with some hidden devs. I'm sorry, Noah Gray, but your time has come. It's Clifton Barkley season. The question really is, are we going to go for it all this year? I feel like we could. We're 92 overall. We might be going for it all this year, boys. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, let's see how this goes, boys. My God. Tell me you've ever seen this. We're at 96 overall. This is almost literally like a God Squad engineered team. I've got multiple 99 overalls. We didn't make the playoffs. That's insane. Justin Reed's getting to a point where he might got to get out of here. Dude, I... What? The Broncos, who we traded Mahomes to, are now 13 and 4. We're in a... Dude, look at how good the AFC West is. 11 and 6 Chargers, 11 and 6 Raiders. So the AFC West is just insane. But dude, what? Cassius Middleton leads the league for the third straight year in passing yards. Literally the third straight year. Awesome season, 36 and 6. <laughs> we didn't make the playoffs. All right, next year's the year. 1,522. Pacheco's best year by far. Judah Hayes had a big year. Matthews, once again, 1,000. Rice, 9.16, 11. Keegan Thompson, 9.52, and 3. Defensively, Bolton continues to just rack him up. Alex Gibson with a lot of tackles. And then Kara Moe with 117. 12 and a half sacks for Will Anderson. Seven car left. Is, how did we do all of this and like, we didn't make the play? I can't believe we didn't make the playoffs. That's crazy. It's just a really tough division, dude. We probably lost the Raiders and the Chargers and the Broncos. That's it. Hey, here's the good news, though. Pretty much nothing happened. And we still have all this cap space. And last free agency, we got nothing. So let's get some monsters this year's free agency. Not to mention Cam Matthews is now a superstar X Factor. Cam Matthews, another 1,000-yard season. Gives him that dev trade upgrade. I recently learned that if your players are finishing in the top 10 of their skill position category, they can get dev trade upgrades. That's why Cam Matthews every season has gotten a dev trade upgrade. So congratulations to him. On defense, no dev trade upgrades, it doesn't look like. Defense is all the exact same. Looks like Lynn Hodges is not too upset at his outside linebacker position. And Justin Reed is a guy I'd like to replace. So first, let's look at free agency. Then we can look at making a trade. Super Bowl 61 is the Steelers versus the Cowboys. My money is on the Cowboys. Madden loves the Cowboys. Season recap, I was right. Trayvon Diggs is Super Bowl MVP. Mahomes wins Offensive Player of the Year and MVP. That's sick. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Eric Bates, also for the Broncos. While well, the Broncos just took over. Didn't win the title, but they had a very good season. 75 mil in cap space. Please tell me there's good free agents. Please, please. <laughs> this is a disgusting free agency. Holy shit.
Do we sign Tyree Kill? Make him wide receiver one and slot wide receiver? Oh, Mike, we have to. How do you not sign Tyree Kill? I've never even seen Tyree Kill in free agency before. This is the first time I've ever seen this. He already wants to play. Oh, of course he doesn't play for KC. He wants to come back and play for KC. I forgot I was doing a Chiefs rebuild. I can't believe how quickly my brain thinks of Tyree Kill as a Miami Dolphin. That's messed up. He already is interested in the team, but I really don't want to risk this. Let's give him a strong deal. The Panthers are fighting with us for Tyreek. I'm giving him five years, 12 million, 10 mil bonus. Strong, strong offer. We got to be in the lead now, right? We might not be in the lead for him. I'm evaluating this. Tyreek Hill is once again. Oh, this is sick. This is sick. I'm geeked about this, man. Ronnie Stanley is available, and I have the cap for it. Do I sign him to a short deal? I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna sign Ronnie Stanley to an expensive one year. This is literally like, let's go win a Super Bowl. Bolster my old line a little bit. Give him a very strong offer there. Looks like we're a top contender for him. Marcus Williams and Traverius were signed elsewhere. Tyron Smith's available, but can't really see a good use for him. No, I think we're good. I don't think we messed with anything else. We're going to eval Ronnie Stanley, and he signs with the Kansas City Chiefs. Huge free agency. Now I might just... Oh, I can trade one of my wide receivers now. 100% because I got such good wide receivers. Who do we trade? Let's look at our wide receivers. This is a disgusting wide receiver room. So 95 overall Tyree Kill with 99 speed. 11 years in the league is wide receiver one. Rice is wide receiver two. Judah Hale is wide receiver three. And then we're just going to trade Keegan Thompson. I like Keegan Thompson a lot, but he's just no longer needed on this disgustingly stacked team. Let's so make sure Tyreek is my slot wide receiver. I can't believe Tyreek's coming back to win another Super Bowl. That's so awesome. Now left tackle, like under normal circumstances, I'm never signing Ronnie Stanley here. Doesn't make any sense. I have Marcel who I drafted, who's an 85 overall, but this is just like, this is a one year, let's go win a ring signing. Uh, the rest of my offensive line is really, really strong. Trey Smith's a 92, Humphrey's a 96, and Joe Thune is an 86. So it, this team is just so ready to go right now. Dude, and here's the thing about Keegan Thompson. Keegan Thompson is an excellent target. He's an excellent trade bait. He's young and superstar. And he's a high overall, 85. We're going to get something good for this. Oh, you know what I want? I want a monster strong safety. I want the best strong safety in the game. That's what I want. We'll replace Justin Reed here. Who's the best? Who's the best strong safety in the game? Grant Delpit? Buda Baker? Derwin. Who says no? Chargers get a round one, Justin Reed and Keegan Thompson. I'll be honest, I might not even got to put the round one in there. Maybe I do. Let's just try round two. Derwin's old. Derwin is old. Okay, we'll just go round one, Justin Reed, Keegan Thompson. The original trade. So close. Holy shit. Let's go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's put in our fifth round. Is that going to be enough to sweeten this? Not quite there. Fourth round should do it. Fourth round should do it. Fuck, I gotta go with a third rounder. 2027 first and a third, Justin Reed. Keegan Thompson. Derwin James is a Kansas City Chief. His team is unfair, completely unfair. We are truly selling out for the Super Bowl though because Derwin is old and so is Tyreek and those guys are eating up a lot of draft capital and, and a lot of salary. Let's get the boy in here. Look at this defense. This is just not fair at all, man. Look at this team. We have built, we have four superstar X Factors on defense. Two we drafted, two we traded for. We got four superstars on defense. Two we drafted, and two were original Kansas City Chiefs. And then offensively, we got three X Factors, two we drafted, one we signed in free agency. And then we got four superstars. Two were originally Chiefs. One was drafted. One was signed in free agency. This is an insane team. Okay, we're on 97 overall. Last season was a fluke. For us to have lost that many games is insane. We're going straight to the Super Bowl, and I actually expect it to be a cakewalk with a 99 offense and a 97 defense. I think we should be fine, guys. I think we'll go win a ring. I do have a second round pick in this draft. Nobody wants Texas quarterback Chase Zimmerman. It's just a hidden dev QB sitting there. Cassius Middleton is pretty pissed off at the GM for taking a QB. Guys, it doesn't matter. My team is a 97 overall. I could literally take these draft picks and throw them. I could burn my draft picks. I could take the stupidest, dumbest idiots, and it wouldn't matter. What if this is a generational quarter? Like, what if this is a superstar X Factor quarterback? I'd laugh my ass off. I still want to see the draft, though. I'm going to skip to the end here, and we'll do a draft recap, then we're going to go win a Super Bowl. Not a generational. Chase Zimmerman's a 72 overall. Then we got Kadeem Theory, 72. Chase Zimmerman. I'm going to check, guys. I'm not going to use this guy. I'm going to check his dev trait. Star. Eh. No wonder he no wonder he made it all the way to the second round. He's he's dog shit. 
the 2020 season, there is a 0% chance, like literally zero, that we don't make the playoffs as a 97 overall. In fact, at the end of the season, we'll probably be almost a 99. No, with morale, if we win games, we will be a 99. That is a more fitting record. Also, you know what's so crazy about this? I unintentionally did another video that I was going to do. I was going to do like 99 overall challenge, but I already fucking did it. This team is 99 overall. That's so insane. Honestly, like the, the Chiefs lineup just develops way too well. Like even if you take Cassius Middleton out of the equation, Pacheco's a 99. This whole O-line, other than Ronnie Stanley, who I signed, is insane. Rice is a 95, Judah's a 95, and then defensively, Nick Bolton's a 99, Mixon's up to 89, McDuffie's 97, 98, Gibson 99, <laughs> so crazy. That's just disgusting. There's no way we don't cakewalk the playoffs. There's no way. I refuse to believe it. Damn, we barely beat the Chargers in week 18, though. 15 and 2. And of course, I mean, with a record like this, you're gonna get a bye. So no wild card game for us. Let's take a look at the stats. Cassius Middleton, no! Cassius Middleton finally gets dethroned. Although Loki, this is his best season he's ever had. Dethroned in passing yards by Dak, who went 44 and 11. We went 43 and eight though, so we played better than Dak. No shocker here, Dak threw a lot of interceptions. Um, Rushing, Jesus, Saquon had a 2008 yard season? Harvey Smith, this guy, dude. This guy, Harvey Smith. What is he looking like now? Harvey Smith is a 99 overall superstar X Factor. Yo, Pacheco. Dude, every single season, Pacheco's got a little bit better, a little bit better. 1,623, amazing season for him. Tyreek hit 1,500 fucking yards. Oh my God, 16 touchdowns. Matthews finally doesn't go for 1,000. That's the Tyreek Hill effect right there. Judah, 959 and two. Rice still had nine touchdowns. Defensively, Nick Bolton, for the first time ever, fell. Karamoa, 110, 12 and a half for Will Anderson, 12 for Adrian Lawry. He's getting really, really good. Karlaftis, eight and a half, five for Von Verden. Sorry, Von. Von Verden was like so geek to be the guy, and then Adrian Lawry got drafted. Tough. Sorry, man. Shit, this is a hell of a season right now, boys. All right, let's go see who we're taking on the divisional. What roster has got to take on the 99 Chiefs? Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Look who we're taking on, these frauds. Let's see what the Broncos roster is looking like now. By the way, take a look at this roster. How many 99s? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we got a 98, 97s. There is no way I lose. Broncos have Javante Williams at a 99, Sertan and Mahomes. Wow, Javante? Sheesh. The big question is, will this really be a cakewalk? Because I've had big overall advantages before, and it's usually never a cakewalk. Our top three, you could pull so many players in my top three they chose derwin middleton and will anderson the divisional taking on the broncos who at the very start of this video we traded patrick mahomes to for a second round pick let's see if this is even close kc walks down a tutty denver does the same we walk down a field goal turn him over get another tutty oh jesus we really just started to pull away 31 to 21 but we are punting the football with a minute 52 here oh it's a fake that was, that, that, that was the most pitiful fake I have ever seen to Clifton Barkley. It's disrespectful as hell. Fourth and five in the divisional? We're running fake punt? I guess we were kind of in no man's land. I don't hate it. Just a dog shit play. And Broncos actually take over a really good field position. Now, this was, uh, it's only crazy if it doesn't work, I guess. Uh, because if that had worked, I would have thought that was the coolest thing ever. Get home, Will Anderson. Mahomes. Heaves! Ball game. Is that? Who was that? Oh, that, oh, I forgot about him. Sorry. Tyrell Mixon. That's the Michigan State free safety. This is the dude who I took because I saw A hit power and A block shit. Cassius Middleton comes out in victory formation. And the Chiefs are taking home the divisional. Let's go, baby. That's all she wrote, baby. Andy Reid, a winner once again. What are the stats on this game? Middleton was not asked. Oh my God, wait, what? Zero touchdowns Middleton? Did Pacheco punch everything in? So Pacheco, 18 attempts, 84 and two touchdowns. Where are my other touchdowns? Oh, this fucking bozo. This dude, Quindarius Riddick, has negative three yards and a touchdown. Clifton Barkley. Clifton Barkley. He's, he's actually subbed in as my fullback, so I must have ran a fullback dive. So Barkley, Quindarius Riddick, and Pacheco. All right, hey, a W is a W. I don't give a shit who scored. I just like that we won. I'm not even gonna lie, though. I kind of thought we beat him by more. That's kind of close. If Mahomes converts at the end there, oh, 
Could this be any better? Taking on the Bills in a blizzard. You couldn't ask for a better playoff script. Their lineup does not look as good as the Broncos lineup either. So Rousseau's a 99. Allen's a 99. Diggs a 97. I ain't worried about this team, honestly. They've got Cole Streeter. Okay, wide receiver. Terrell Epps. Deacon Linton. Thomas. Eh, I'm not worried about anything on this. Bills. I think this might even be easier in the Broncos game. They're 11 and 6. Got that playoff blizzard. The conference championship. The AFC championship. 99 overall Chiefs taking on the 91 Bills. Josh Allen meeting with Cassius Middleton. Big AFC championship, boys. Let's see how this one plays. Will this one be a close game? Chiefs score first. Bills respond. Chiefs get stuffed. Then respond. Chiefs score again. Bills get a field goal up there i think we smoked them we really we did i still want to watch cassius middleton go off but this is a cakewalk 28 to 10 i think it's just pacheco rest of the game huh there's pacheco huge hole great block from trey smith pacheco's gonna walk it down to the 26 that's the two minute warning yikes tough day to be a bills fan bills living to the chiefs in the in the playoffs? Who could have wrote this script? It's going to be Isaiah Pacheco. Wow, look at the pull blocks, dude. The guards are playing great right now. I think they're... Dude, I think Buffalo's literally conceding the game. They're not even calling timeouts and more pancakes. Pacheco just running like this, doesn't want to fumble. Dude, Pacheco, truck him. One more handoff to Isaiah Pacheco. This ball game's over. Oh, get in there. 11 rushes, 74 yards. You know, we're not... Like, we're really not a run team. I thought he was going to do a disrespect bucket right there. The AFC Championship easy than the divisional we just ran through the buffalo bills i mean i gotta say guys we are 99 overall i'm not shocked but it's awesome 30 for 37 cassius middleton was pissed that he had no touchdowns last time so he goes for three here judah hale 109 yards a touchdown for rice a touchdown pacheco a touchdown tyree kill it's kind of funny tyree kills done like nothing in the playoffs but he had 1,500 yards on the season. Whatever. I don't care. We're winning. Wow. What a perfect Super Bowl. The Chiefs are taking on the 94 overall San Francisco 49ers. I'll give you guys one final look at our roster before we go take this dub, baby. Pacheco is a superstar X Factor. Let's go. He's a hard 99. No morale. Same with Middleton. Tyreek's a 99. Matthews is a 98. Rice a 96. Hale a 94. Stanley. Offensive line looks amazing. And defensively, got Lynn Hodges, Derwin James, Gibson, Will Anderson. Tyrell Mixon with that big interception. And George Karlaftis is still hanging around. He looks depressed, but he's still here. I'm surprised he never got a dev trade upgrade. He's just been chilling at star dev. Take your guesses right now. What overall is Brock Purdy? We're in the year 2027. What overall is Brock Purdy? 49ers? McCaffrey's a 99. Warner's a 99. Bosa's a 99. Ayuk's a 99. Hufanga's a 99. Debo a 98. Brock Purdy is a 97 overall for the San Francisco 49ers. Superstar. Excellent stats. He has almost 99 in every throw stat. Wow. Yeah, you know, this might actually be our fairest matchup. I feel like it kind of has to be. And it is the Super Bowl, after all. Fred Warner, Nick Bosa, Debo Samuel taking on Derwin, Pacheco, Cassius Middleton. In the big game, baby. Take me to Hard Rock Stadium. 49ers, Kansas City. City Chiefs. Oh, wait, of course it's not Hard Rock. The year is 2027. Wow, this is gonna be a sick game. This low-key could be uh, this year's Super Bowl preview right here. I'm hoping this game is close, though. I want to watch some intense football. Niners score a field goal. We score a field goal. It's 6-3 to three right now. Yo, this is close. All right, 6-6. Six to six. It's the end of the second quarter right here. Middleton's got the ball first and 10 into Niners territory. Little delay routes here. That's a sketchy ball. Oh, five wide. You, you know I love that, Cassius. You know I love that, Cassius Middleton. Every single receiver we got out there has got an ability. Gotta love that. Wow. Two absolutely blanketed balls. Both to Rice, both caught. We're gonna preserve the clock here. No way it's only field goals in the Super Bowl, right? Drops back. Surveys. <laughs> what the fuck? He's got his X-Factor lit up. Wait a minute. It does matter in Sim. Maybe abilities do matter in Sim. He's got his X-Factor. He stepped out. No. Tyreek. Why is Tyreek kill number 82? What the? That looks disgusting. I don't like that. Tyreek stepped out. That's not a tutty. Cassius. I don't even know what Cassius Middleton's X-Factor is low key. Second and goal. 10 seconds. Come on. You did it once. Do it again. 
Oh, he's finding the tightest little windows. And it's and that drive was all Rishi Rice right there. Hey, we signed Tyreek, but that was all Rice. And on it, Tyreek stepped his ass out of bounds. Wow, with seven seconds in the second quarter, we put a touchdown in. And Harrison Butker, one of the remaining Chiefs from the original squad, puts that through 13 to six. Let's go. We put up another touchdown. Ooh, wait a minute. Onside kick from the Niners. We were able to score, make it 20, but they scored right back and now they're onside kicking. D Cam Matthews? No, Judah Hale. Judah Hale just transcended on that onside return. Big hands. San Fran has no timeouts. Wait a minute. I didn't even realize this. I think that's the bowl. Cassius Middleton might be walking out in victory formation. He is. And he's going to end the game with his X-Factor. Oh, let's go. Cassius Middleton and the Kansas City Chiefs are Super Bowl champions here. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? I thought we were kneeling the ball until the game was over. How did we lose the ball? I'm so sorry. That happened so fast. They had no timeouts. And all we had to do was kneel it. How the fuck did they just score? Wait, did they just score and go for two and not get it? What? Wait, I could have just lost. What just happened? Oh, no. Wait, that third and eight was a kneel. I'm so sorry, you guys. I thought that was first down. Wait, so we punted. I'm so sorry that we didn't get to see this. Whoa, big mental lapse by me. Purdy passes to Ayuk, then Kittle, then he runs, then to Debo, then to Ayuk. Then he, holy shit, they fucking went for two. Debo scored on a touchdown. They went for two and didn't get it. Zero situational awareness from me. Holy shit. Hey, we won either way by kneeling the ball. So I guess I was just expediting the process. I wish I could have seen them go for two right there. That would have had my heart thumping. Wow, we barely. Dude, even with a 99 overall team against a 94, we won the Super Bowl by a point. And honestly, if they convert the two-point conversion, we lose. That's crazy. Hey, we just built one of the craziest rosters I've literally ever seen. The only thing that's left to do, I'm going to sim us some years into the future. Let's see if this dynasty holds up. I mean, we're kind of a 99 overall. I don't see how it crumbles. But yeah, let's go see how a few more Super Bowls pan out. Hopefully, I can win a few more. The year is 2037. We're an 87 overall. Do we have any players remaining from our initial roster. Yo, Chase Zimmerman, that quarterback, he's 32 now, and he's a superstar X-Factor, hard 99. That's nice. Rice is still on the squad. Joe Booty, this dude is 44 playing left guard. Why have you not retired? It's like everybody else is retired. Will Anderson is still kicking. He's a 95 overall. Everybody else is pretty much gone. So here's our original Super Bowl in 27. In 28, it was the Texans and CJ Stroud. 29 was the Chargers. 2030. Hey, so we did. We win another Super Bowl in 2030. But our Super Bowl MVP, wait a minute. So Cassius Middleton headed somewhere else. Super Bowl MVP is Chase Zimmerman. That was actually a really good pick. 2031, it's Ravens, Raiders, Chargers, Browns, Jets, and Cowboys. Damn. Hey, well, we got another Super Bowl, boys. All right, boys. Hey, that concludes. I love you. I hope you enjoyed the rebuild. Peace.